Hi guys. Hi Michael. Hello professor. How are you doing today? Good? Yeah, so far so well. Good. Miriam, did you get my email? Yes, and I replied back. Okay, what'd you say? I said that I, I didn't hand draw it. I was actually using a ruler. It was just my hands were shaking. Okay. I gave you the five points back. Thank you. What, hap what happened is it, the first line, if you look at your graph, the first line looked different from the rest of your graph. Yeah, I know. I I'll give you the five points back. That's not a big deal for me. But Thank you me. understand about the y-axis. Yeah, I get that part. Okay, no problem. Hey, you got a 50-50 out of that. You got 50% yeah. back. You should be happy. Thank you. <laughs> you don't sound happy. I'm just tired. I, I want you jumping up and down for joy on this. <laughs> well, well, this will make you happy, Miriam. Literally speaking, if I'm still talking at eight o'clock, somebody shoot me. Because this is a very, very, very simple lab, right? Okay. Very simple lab. Love to hear that. News, good news. Okay, I'm just waiting for everybody to get in here. I got, uh, looks like 12 people in here now. I can see you from here, <laughs> if need be. Okay. All right. Very, very, very simple lab today, okay? Now, there are two things we use, we use physical properties for. One of which is we use physical properties to identify substances. We also use physical properties to separate and purify them, okay? Does that kind of make sense to you? Yeah. I have a question. So are we all gonna be getting hundreds on this? On what? This lab? Yeah. No, I doubt that because you guys haven't you guys haven't paid attention to Sig Figs left. Yeah. Oh. oh Sig Figs. Oh my God. Sig Figs and measurement readings. So Miriam, no, I can almost guarantee there won't be one four there won't be 13 100 percent on this. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Popovich, I have a quick question yeah, about Paige. that. Um, so is it okay, like if we get the lab done early, we send you our results to make sure our sig figs are okay? Or is, or is that not necessary? Faith, if you'd like to do that, that would be fine. Oh, thank you. I, I do that normally if I'm in class, if I'm in a face-to-face -face class, I give you guys the option after you've completed the lab to come up, run your run your numbers past me, and I'll make comments because I'm not I don't really I really don't want to screw you out of points. I really don't. What I want you to do is I want you to understand. And if you're there, if if I can explain this to you, then it works out better. Mm -hmm. uh, does that sound fair enough, Faith? Yes, thank you. All right, let's see. Gaith, are you here? Gaith? Gaith? Davila? Davila? I'm here. I'm here. Mon Monica? Here. Monica, Terry? Here, sir. Sophia? Sophia? Sophia's not here. Apple Grace. I'm here. I saw Hunter. I saw Leandre. Maverick, I think I saw you in here, right? That is correct, sir. Tyler, I saw. I, uh, I saw. Jeff. Here. Grace. Here. Katie, did you get my email? Katie? Katie's not here. Mateo, I saw. Faith is here. Jennifer. Yes. Victoria. I'm here. Michael, I saw. Philip. Philip. And Mariam is here. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I was explaining. The two, two of the main things we use physical properties. One is to identify substances, and the other is to physically separate them and purify them from one another. 
And it kind of makes sense if you think about it. Uh, since they have different properties, we can use these properties in a way that will allow us to physically take one and remove it from the other. Uh, say we're dealing with boiling points. This is the whole way they, uh, the oil industry makes gasoline. It's the whole way that the oil industry makes things like uh, charcoal lighter fluid. They take something like oil. Oil has a whole array of chemical compounds in it. Some boil at, lighter, at lower temperatures than others. So what they do is they take this whole bunch of oil and they start heating it up slowly. The ones that boil at lower temperatures evaporate off first and they collect them. Then they heat it up a little more. More stuff comes off, they collect that. So that's how the oil industry is able to separate different components of oil into making things like gasoline, uh, into making things like uh, uh, charcoal lighter fluid, diesel, things of that nature. If we deal with another physical property, let's deal with magnetism, Victoria. If you had a mixture of sugar and iron, do you think you'd be able to separate the iron away from the sugar? I would assume so, yeah. All right. Maybe. That's I don't it. know. I've given, <laughs> Victoria, I've given you a big, big, big clue here. What's this word? Magnetism. So they Ooh, would probably. Do you, how do you think they, they would be? Hold on. I was speaking. They're probably going to be attracted to each other. What's but didn't be they used to do this for gold? Like finding gold? They can use the density between like gold and different metals to get gold out of a mixture of different like sediment. What they do is they end up making the gold, the, the, the substance is liquid. That's not really how they usually do it, Hunter. They usually uh, react it with sulfur. Uh, so that's one of the okay. things that they do. Uh, but uh, actually, that's a good point. You know, gold doesn't dissolve in anything, right? The way you make gold dissolve is you mix hydrochlor, or you mix, I'm sorry, you mix sulfuric and nitric acid together. It's called aqua regia. That's really the only solution that will dissolve gold. So basically, that's how you get the gold out of the rock. You pulverize the rock really, really good. And then you uh, uh, mix it in, in with this aqua regia. The aqua regia dissolves the gold. You filter out the rock. So you have this gold in solution. And then you hit it with something like sulfur. It causes the gold to solidify out. Uh, That's, it's honestly amazing how they can do that. Uh, it, it is fascinating, Hunter. So, Victoria, magnetism, iron, and sugar. How would you separate the iron from the sugar? With a magnet, I guess. Well, I don't... You have well. never played with a magnet in your life? I have, but never with, you know, with sugar, I guess. You haven't had that little toy that has like the guy with the fuzzy iron filings and you got to move the iron filings with the magnet so he has a beard. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have used the magnet. Yeah. So the magnet will attract the iron, leaving right. the sugar behind, right? Right. They're attracted to each other. Got that. They're dating. <laughs> they're dating. They're dating. <laughs> but they're not swinging. No, they're not. No, 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 no. Oh, Lord, not this again. <laughs> All right. Now, there's another thing called solubility. Terry, have you ever been to the beach? Yes, sir. Okay, when you're at the beach, right? You got to put your little tootsies in the water, right? You're on sand. Yep. I hate sand. I, I hate sand, sand, too. I live here, and I hate it. So you get out there, right? You get all this water coming up. Now... That is ocean water. What is in the ocean water? Salt. Salt. Okay. So the salt is in the water. Does the water dissolve the sand? Ye yes. 
The water, sand dissolves in water? No, it doesn't. It sinks to the bottom. Okay, so Terry, if you have a salt and sand mixture, mm -hmm. how are you going to separate the salt from the sand? Um, I would dissolve the salt in water. You take the mixture, dissolve, just try and add water to it and try and stir it around, trying to get as much of that salt in the water, which is exactly what we're going to be doing tonight. We're going to take a salt sand mixture and we're going to add water to it and we're going to stir the snot out of it. When we're stirring the snot out of it, that's getting the water to dissolve in the liquid, or that's getting the salt to dissolve in the water, leaving the sand behind. We're literally separating two parts of the mixture from one another. So we're going to take that salt sand. We're going to add water to it. The salt's going to stay in solution. The sand is going to stay solid in the bottom. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to filter. We're going to take that whole mixture. We're going to filter it through some filter paper. The sand, because it's solid, will remain back. The salt will stay in the liquid. OK? Now, I said sand, but I actually meant salt here. OK, so right now we have the sand in the filter paper. We got pure sand left back there. We have salt in the liquid. How are we going to retrieve the salt from the boil, liquid? You can boil the uh, water away. All you're going to have to do is boil that water away. We're left with the salt. So that's basically what we're doing tonight. The only other thing is a calculation you need to know. And this is mass percent. Mass percent is simply the part divided by the whole times 100%. Now, what you are dealing with is the part is either going to be the sand or the salt. The whole is going to be the mass of the entire mixture. All right, let's talk about the procedure because there's one funky thing. There's one funky thing about this procedure that you got to kind of understand. All right, you're, you're given a test tube that is filled with a mixture of salt and sand. You're going to take, you're going to weigh that entire test tube with the entire mixture. Then you are going to pour half of that salt sand mixture into a beaker. And you are going to weigh the test tube with half the mixture. All right. To get the weight of the mixture you've added to the beaker, you subtract the weight of the test tube with the entire mixture and the test tube with the remaining mixture in there. That will give you the weight of the entire mixture. All right, procedure wise, we've dumped the half of our mixture into a beaker. We're going to add 50 milliliters of water and we're going to stir it. This is the most exciting part of this lab, guys. We're going to stir it like crazy. Then, while you're stirring it, your partner's over there. Your partner is weighing a filter paper with watch glass. You're going to fold that filter paper up, put it in a funnel, and you're going to now filter your mixture in the beaker through the filter paper. All the liquid with the salt is going to pass through. The sand is going to remain. So you're going to remove, after you've poured all the liquid through there, you're going to remove the filter paper and you're going to open it up on the watch glass. Now, you have an extra bit of weight in there, don't you? That weight that you have is going to consist of more than the watch glass, filter paper, and sand. What, What's the other bit of weight that you're not accounting for? The uh, water on this. The water. Paper. The water. You still got to realize that you got to get rid of the water. 
So you're gonna open up that filter paper on the glass and you're gonna put that into an oven and you're going to heat the watch glass until you remove all the water. Then you're gonna weigh the sand, filter paper and watch glass. Okay, you have sand, filter paper, watch glass, and you have the weight of the filter paper and watch glass. If you subtract those two, that will give you the weight of your part. That will give you the weight of your sand. All right, you have the beginning. You weighed the test tube and the entire mixture. You also now have the test tube with half the mixture. If you subtract those two, you have the weight of the mixture you put in the beaker to begin with. Okay? Now, you are going to do this for a second trial. You still have a test tube with half the mixture in it, right? You have that weight of that test tube with half the mixture. You're going to pour the rest of the mixture into a second beaker. And you're going to take that test tube and weigh it. The weight of your second trial of mixture is going to be the weight of the test tube with half of the mixture minus the weight of the empty test tube. Again, you're going to repeat the same steps, four through 10, and you're going to get the weight of the sand in the second trial. All right. So the calculations we're gonna do, we have the weight of the full test tube. We have the weight of the half filled test tube. We're gonna subtract those two. This gives us our weight of our entire mixture in our first trial. We're gonna take the watch glass filter and sand. We're gonna subtract from that the weight of the watch glass and the filter paper. This gives us the weight of our sand. Now, you got to realize my mixture consisted of sand and salt. So if my mixture is sand and salt and I have the weight of the sand, I can subtract those two and I'll end up with my weight of salt. I've got the weight of my sand, dividing that by the weight of my entire mixture, multiplying by 100. In that instance, I have 79.99% sand. I got my mass percent salt, which I got from subtracting the mixture and the sand. So this is my weight of my salt. I divide that by the weight of the mixture. This gives me 20.0%. Note, guys. First calculation, four sig figs divided by four sig figs. My answer is in four sig figs. Second answer, I've got three sig figs divided by four. My answer is in three sig figs. Note the sig figs in this, okay? So would it be three sig figs? For what? For the, your final answer? I've got two final answers, Victoria. I have the percent sand, that's gonna be four sig figs, my percent Salt is going to be three sig figs. Okay. Um, because right. isn't there, because I know, I think there was something on the pre lab where you have to take both percentages uh, to get an average. Maybe. Uh, the tr no, you have to take both percentages of both trials. <laughs> oh, okay. Never mind then. Sorry, I got that confused. Because You're good. I've only shown you one trial here. Right. The second trial, you're going to have the 20.442, which is the weight of the half filled test tube. Mm -hmm. From that, you're going to subtract the empty test tube and you're going to get your weight of your entire mixture in your second trial. Yeah. Right? I got, I got, I understand sick things. I thought, um, no, nope. I got lost. Never mind. We're good. We're on the right track. Okay. I do want to do one thing before I stop. I got nine minutes to do it in. Because I promised you, we we're getting out of here on time, which would be eight o'clock. Fair enough, guys? 
Absolutely. Yep. Does anybody have any questions about the calculations or anything? Really, this is one of the simpler labs. Question? Okay. I'm gonna go to, that's it. I'm gonna go to report. Oh, by the way, people in my lecture, there's something funky going on with quiz eight. I have to fix it. So don't, you're gonna have to wait until tomorrow to take it, all right? I know but, you were, it, but professor, is it still due on Thursday? It's still due on Thursday. It'll be fixed by tonight. You haven't even started it yet, Gabe. I did, Matt. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, where am I at? Uh, preview. Just a couple of things I want to show you in here. Start quiz. And this has more to do with the kind of post lab questions than anything else. These things, the, the report is really straightforward. Calculate the original mass, calculate the mass of the dry sand, calculate the mass of the salt. Okay. Again, be wary of sig figs and measurement readings. Calculate the mass percent of the sand, calculate the mass percent of the salt. One trial, one trial only. Now, for question three, and question four here, I need you to show me, I need you to show me the work because believe it or not, even though the percentage should be the same, somehow, sometimes people don't get it the same and I need to see that you have not gotten it the same. If your results are not pretty much the same from trial one to trial two, check and see if you've done something wrong. All right, now, you have three solutions, or three substances, sodium hydroxide, lead chloride, and silver chloride. Of those three, the only one that's soluble in cold water is, so, is sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide and lead chloride are both soluble in hot water. Silver chloride is not soluble in hot water. Can you separate silver chloride and lead chloride using cold water? Can you? I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Is he I mean, right? I meant no. I meant no. Uh, yeah, I think he is. Yeah, I think he is. We're dealing with cold water. Look, look at the screen, guys. I want to know if you can separate silver chloride and lead chloride in cold water. Oh. Uh, I Sorry. do not think oh, so. It says so. yes. It says yes on the screen. It does not. It says it's it says sodium hydroxide is soluble in cold water. Oh, oh, oh okay. I see it. I see it. Okay. Can you separate silver chloride and lead chloride using cold water? No. No. Now you got to figure out the reason why you can't. All right. Question six. Okay. Now we're still dealing with these answers. Okay. And if we're dealing with these answers, we have to develop a flow chart, okay? So if we have a mixture of silver chloride and lead chloride, what is the first thing that we are going to have to do? What is the first thing we did? What is the first thing we did with the lab we just worked on? You add water. Add water. So. You look down here. What kind of water? 
Hot water. Hot water. So you're going to look down here and you're going to see add hot water. You're going to say step one. Okay. What are you going to do for step two? You so have confused. all these choices. You've uh, just that, added hot water, water. Evaporate the water from the compound. If you evaporate the water, you're just going to be left with the silver chloride and the lead chloride again. Oh, uh, yeah, this is a bit uh, confusing. Um, you filter. How do you remove the uh, separated elements? Do you, do you have like a- Right now, all you have done, all you've done is you've added hot water. Can you go back up so you can see what's, what they go into hot and cold water? Right. By the way, Katie, did, so you get my you... E did you get my email back? Yeah, you sent two different ones that they both said something different. I'll email you again. But um, so would you now add cold water? Or no, I'm lying. That's not it. That's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, was weigh them an option? <laughs> Is what? Weighing them an option? <laughs> I don't know. These the, are your choices. Uh, one compound should uh, dissolve in water. Which one? Which one dissolves in the hot water? Uh, the the lead chlorate. Okay, lead chlorides in the hot water. So, which one would you put it? So last one. Last one. Now, lead chloride is dissolved in the water. The lead chloride is dissolved in the water. The silver chloride is a solid. What do you think you're going to do in step three? Separate Come on, them. guys, you got a minute. How are you going to separate them? Paper filter. Filter. Good. All right. Now, the solid that's in the filter paper residue, what's that going to be? That's going to be part five, or is that four? Could I see it again? Solid. Okay. We filtered. We've separated the solid that's in the filter paper. What did we say was dissolved and what did we say was solid? So the solid would be the AGCL. So we're gonna look down here and we're gonna say wet solid AGCL. Okay, right? Yes. So how yes. are we going to, how are we going, what are we gonna do for six? Right now we've got wet silver chloride. What are we gonna do? We wanna get pure silver chloride. Uh, evaporate the water. Evaporate the water. Are you seeing how this thing is working now, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Yes. Okay, you're gonna evaporate the water, which is evaporate the, mm, dry the wet solid using the oven. That leaves you with, Pure solid AGCL, no water present. Are you seeing how this thing works now? Yes. Other side, the solution in the beaker, the filtrate. Okay. The solution in the beaker, the filtrate. What's five? The lead chlorate. Lead chloride. You got to find out which one. The lead chloride dissolved in the water.
Okay, this actually should be two. This one, we've separated that out. That is now, what, six? Five. Okay. So now we've got lead chloride dissolved in water right here. What are we going to do to that? We want the lead chloride. Evaporate the water. Evaporate the water away, which will be this one. All right. And that leaves us with? Lead chloride. Lead chloride. Now, first person. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna even say first person. Extra credits involved here. Extra credit is involved. You know that little space with the with the one thing there. Answer in that text box. Wait, what? You have lead chloride in hot water for number five. What is a second way? that you can isolate that lead chloride away from the water. I don't want to know now. I want you to answer in the text box. If you answer in the text box, I will give you extra credit for that. Professor, could you repeat the question one more time, please? Again, we have been through the filtering process. We have the silver chloride in the filter paper we have the lead chloride in the hot water. What they're, what they're telling you to do is they're telling you to then evaporate all the water away. You're going to be left with lead chloride. I'm telling you there is a second way that you can isolate the lead chloride. If you tell me what that second way to isolate the lead chloride is, I will give you 10% on this report. Okay. Basically, the question is, how do you isolate lead chloride? Is that, is that the question, correct? The From way the that they didn't do it here. Yeah, because right. there's multiple right. ways. There are different ways that you can isolate the lead chloride. I want you to give me the extra credit involves giving me the way that you can isolate it that is not used in the procedure that's here. And actually, my way is better. Okay. Guys, that's it. That's this whole thing. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Thank you. Uh, do you want to do, do uh, what's this last part? Oh, you got three compounds. A, B, I need, you need to see this. You got three compounds, A, B, and C. Mixture was dissolved in cold water and filtered. Okay, cold water, the filtrate. The filtrate by definition is the liquid. It is not the solid. The filtrate is the liquid that comes through the filter paper. You took the liquid and it evaporated to give pure A. Okay, next you have a funnel, a filter paper that contains B and C. You put hot water through it. The filtrate, again, the liquid, the hot water, that was evaporated to give pure C. B remained in a filter. You have to identify whether, which one of those three is compound A, B, and C. So hold on, Professor. I just want to make sure I understand. So for the first one, A, G, C, O, it's uh, no for, for cold and hot. So therefore it will be compound B because it stayed in the funnel. I'm just trying to piece these together. Dave, what you're doing, you are putting cold water. You have a mixture of three compounds. You dissolve it in cold water and filter it. Only one of the compounds went through with the water. The other two stayed back in the, as a solid. What went through the liquid, the filtrate, the liquid portion that went through, that was evaporated and that was pure A. 
Next, to the two other compounds left in the filtrate, you added hot water. The hot water dissolved one of them, went through, was collected, and that liquid was evaporated. That led to compound C. Compound B was just left in the filter paper. You have to tell me the identity of A, B, and C, and those are your three choices. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's really all I have. All righty. All right. All right. Good Thank night, you, sir. Have a great Take evening, care. Everyone. Oh, anybody have any complaints about the graphing lab? Uh, I just want to say I'm really sorry about my first email. I panicked because when I saw that my grade was a 47 on that graphing lab, I nearly like dropped dead at work. So that's why I, I panicked, but I saw that you you fixed it. You, you no, no, I didn't grade. fix it. Basically, Victoria, what you're saying, and just keep in mind this, guys, there are a whole bunch, like for example, these last couple of questions are all going to be answered in the report. So you will get a semi-grade. I uh, have to go back and grade all the text boxes. Okay, because I uh, I panicked. I was um, internally uh, screaming at work when I saw that. So good to know that that's how that works now. Next time you do that, would you please sell tickets? I'd like to buy one. <laughs> Uh, no charge. I do want to admit the, uh, the picture part with the whole utilizing a different website. Oh, speaking of which, Victoria, I you think you need to you need to rethink the way you submit pictures. I I could not upload the um like I tried through the video. I think I did this with Terry, and I was like, "Are you seeing what I'm seeing?" And we couldn't get the hyperlink or anything to work. So. That was the only way that I could do it. Uh, it was real small. Oh, I'm sorry. You need, well, I'll try if, next if it's time. real small, you need to increase the pixels. Okay. All right. I actually I'm have sorry. I'm sorry, Miriam. I said, I have, go ahead. You can go ahead. I'll ask my I, I was, Gaith was talking. That's why I didn't, I didn't want to be rude uh, to him. Okay. So I got the, um, so like for the post lab questions after like the study hours graph, yeah. versus grades. So you asked a question about um, like if the line was direct or indirect. So are you talking about the line or the points? Because the points were curved, but the line is obviously straight. No, the, the, the line, you, when it's curved like that, Miriam, yes, you can draw a line through it. But when, when it's got that, that bend in it, it's definitely a curved line. And therefore, it, it curve lines are indirect relationships. That's what I put, and I got it wrong. Was it? I put indirect because the line is curved. Uh, okay, let me let me get out of here. Keith, did you have something you needed to talk to me about? Guys? Yeah, I'm yeah. right here, sir. Um, Anthony, I was just like saying I was as well struggle, struggling with the picture and, you know, what I want to I understand that. That's one of the reasons, to be honest with you, Keith, you guys are better at dealing with computers than I am. Uh, and that's why I put that forth in the student forum. Uh, question Did you grade all of the labs? Yes, I did. No? Yes, I, oh, all damn. the labs except oh, one. Somebody, uh, Katie, submitted the lab late. Katie, oh, that's why. I'm trying to figure out why, Miriam, your name is. Okay, Miriam, 
First of all, do you mind I'm showing uh, for me to show this to people? Yeah, no, go ahead. No, I don't care. All right. Which, which was the question? It's question 12. You have these things memorized, don't you? Okay. Confusing me because you can literally, when the points, you can literally see the curve. I'll even use your graph on you. You're saying that's not a straight line? No, the line is straight, but the points. Wait, wait. You can't have the points be in a curve and the line be straight, Miriam. No, it's fired. You can't, <laughs> you can't. It's either going to be like curve, like point, 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 point. Point. You see what I'm saying? It's either they're going to be in like this good. shape. I don't know. Okay. This is a straight line. There's a direct relationship between studying and no, the no, I get, get it. I get it. But like the line, not all the points are on the line. That's why it's not really. All right, Miriam. Basically, there is experimental error. So if you're if you're saying not all the points are in the line, yes. That's going to happen with every graph you draw. Okay, it's just... going to be dependent upon how good you are at uh, replicating your data. It's how good you are at being precise. All right, Miriam. So they're not all the points are not going to be on the line. I get it. Thank you. Okay. So basically, the answer to this was it should have been a direct because the line is straight. Okay. Thank you, you you had it right. You had the direct, you had to reason if it was curved, you knew it was indirect. And if it was straight, you knew it was direct. But yeah. this line was straight. That's the reason you got that question wrong. Okay. I get it. Thank you so much. No problem. Anything, anybody else? Uh, I got a question about mine. If you got some time. <laughs> if I've got you some time. Okay, Terry. Again, I'm going to put this out to you. Do you care? I don't care, sir. Take mine as an example of what not to do. Okay. Uh, Will it load? Will it not? It'll load. Okay. What are your questions? Um, about, I think it's the first graph. But I think you said expand the X and Y. What did you mean by that? Okay. All right, look, your highest values right here, right? Yeah. You see a Terry 60 and 229. How many, how many squares? Um, you've got 15 wide and 20 up. How many didn't you use? Um, not enough. Five. Look, this square you didn't use, didn't use that one, didn't use that one. You didn't use five boxes here. I see what you mean. So you didn't use five out of 15. That meant that you were only using 67% of the graph. That's lower than what I told you. Okay. So I should have shrunk the, uh, the uh, X. Well, you should have. You should have increased, I'm sorry, you should have decreased your scale. Okay? I see what you mean. If you would have decreased your scale, you would have pushed it out in that direction more. Okay, that makes Ted? sense. And did I say X and Y? Yeah. Why you're not using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's even worse. You're only using 13 of the 20 boxes. So you're not using 65%. So that's why, that's what I meant with X and Y expand. I want, I wanted these points, this one, this big higher point, if it would have been somewhere out here, I would have no problem with it. Okay. Gotcha. What else, Terry? Um, that was it, because I had the same problem with the other graph as well. He told me to expand it, and then 
the labeling. I, ex- I told you to expand one there. side of it, didn't I? Um, whatever you said. You got you scored higher on that one. Uh, I told you to expand the X axis, not the Y one, in that one. Uh, I said expand both of them. Please don't, don't don't take away more points. I'm at a sixty nine, sir. Sixty nine point eight one. If you could just, you know, help brother out. I, I see a little point on his graph. It doesn't look straight for me. You want to go ahead and look at that again? <laughs> Stop helping him. <laughs> you got seventy percent going in the other direction. So basically, your y-axis is fine. Okay. I see what you mean. So yeah, I just gave you five points. So you're up over 70 now. Woohoo. I'm just trying to make it to a uh, grad school. You're going to get to grad school, Terry. Hey, Professor, I have a question. Yeah, Gabe. So you, uh, when I was looking at mine, you said to utilize a ruler. So can I go ahead and confess even after utilizing a ruler? I'm not good at making straight lines. <laughs> <laughs> so how is this fair? <laughs> Uh, okay. Yes. Do the best that you can. Uh, have you seen? Have you ever seen my handwriting, Gay? Yes, I have, sir. That's why I was looking for some compassion here. You know. Yeah. Got to use at least a. Got to try to use a ruler, Gay. Got to try to. Okay. Okay, I got uh, eight of the in here. Anybody have anything you need to talk about? Katie, are you still out there? Apparently Katie's gone. I'm sorry, uh, I just have one one quick question before you go. Wait, 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 wait. You've got two emails to me and you've got two questions. <laughs> yeah, it is about the email. Did you like already fix the points or are you still gonna do it? What the fix what points? Said for one of the graphs, you're just gonna you I said the for Terry. 50% off. I'm sorry? You told it to me in the beginning of class. I thought I did. I thought I graded it already. I'm not sure. I thought I gave it to you already. I. Oh, you're talking about the that thing. Yeah. I haven't done it yet. Come on, oh, look, guys. She's got a 92 percent on this, and she's whining. Come on, oh, man. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> What do you, you can, mean? You can, you can donate like 10 of those points to me. Exactly. <laughs> Overachiever having that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, to be honest, that graph was a pain in the ass. I'm not going to lie. I think me yeah, and Terry were... like wanted to cry when we were trying to plot everything. I became, uh, I became an MS Paint engineer that day. <laughs> and you're an engineer, Terry. Oh, yeah. I am an engineer. You're right. <laughs> Miriam, you just got fixed. Uh, so I stand corrected. She doesn't have a 92%. Thank you. She has a 94%. Professor, I had a, a yeah. quick question. Sorry. Um, is Are you going to update like what lab will be like the lowest will be dropped? Because I have. Right now, it's right now. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. I was about to say it is it is the lowest grab, lab is being dropped. Uh, Victoria? Yeah. No. Okay. No, I'm not going to do that because the grade, please put this in your SSI. The grade book is so blasted convoluted that I cannot tell what is what in the grade book. Okay, because like I would have oh, to I would have to add up the grades individually. Oh, so like all of our upcoming assignments are coming in as zeros. Is that why it's like? Yes. Oh, yes. okay. So will that? If you look at the grade, I'm pulling up. Can you see the grade? Oh, hold on. Can you see the? Yeah. Grade book now. Yeah, yeah. All of these reports. Look at them. They're all uh, zeros. Look again, Professor. I was screaming internally when I 
<laughs> when I first saw that I had an F in lab, and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> so, okay. All right. Okay, now, there's also this, all right? Where are you, okay. Victoria? Where are you at? Sinopoly. Okay. Now, after letter grade after graphing, it's saying you have 37 points, you have a B. Okay. Now you're down to a C. Okay. Okay, but we haven't done that lab yet. Right. All right, you understanding? We haven't oh. done this lab. So you've got a zero for it. A zero credited for this lab, okay? Okay, so we can tell what our grade is through by the... looking at this stuff. All right. Okay. But right now, after the after I put in the the graphing, after I put in the results of the report grade for the graphing, you have this letter grade. Okay. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Thank I'm you. I'm glad it does to you. <laughs> Supposedly, Victoria, I am not going to define what sort of matrix Dr. Musgrave is using here. Uh, pff, listen, I don't know either. I'm right with you. Uh, so since we're passing out three points, Professor, I would like to uh, go ahead and bid on three. You would like <laughs> to bid on three? Uh, Gaith. Okay, yeah. Gaith. I'm 63 and a half now, Gaith. Okay. I, I'm sorry, I'm 63 now. This means I have to work until I'm 66 and a half, Gabe, okay? Okay. Now, you have to understand that once I give you these three points, I'm going to get fired, okay? <laughs> so what has to happen is you have to make up the monetary gain for me to overcome my not being able to work until I'm 66 and a half. That's three and years of his salary, dog. <laughs> Math don't if add it, up, bro. Gabe, if it is worth it to you, Professor, you know, stimulus check really hits hard sometimes, man, you know? <laughs> Guys, if we have nothing else, I'm hungry. I don't know about you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. Thank you, Professor. Have, Thank you, sir. Have, have a good night, guys. Bye. Did you, did you mark me present, Professor? Huh? Did you, did you mark me present? Because I know Are you, you here? called me. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to make quick. Have a good night, sir. Have a good, Have a good night. Yes, Keith, I marked you here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, Professor.